Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank all of you for being here today. I appreciate your presence. Um, I, I, I'm going to assume this goes to CMS, and and that that's um, Ms. Brandt. Can you help me here? I'm not. I know the situation that exists with the nursing home situation in Florida. Are you going to now require nursing homes to to have generators? Is that going to be a requirement? And can you very briefly tell me how that's going to work? Sure. Um, we actually have an emergency preparedness rule, which was finalized last year, um, that is going to be surveyed again starting next month. So that's when the state surveyors go out. It requires generators. It requires emergency preparedness plans, and it requires training on a continual basis. For Would there be any kind of reimbursements for the nursing homes? I spent much of my professional career as a nursing home consultant, and, and I can tell you they are pushed for trying to, to stay solvent as it is. Is there going to be any kind of help for them, or is this just another government mandate? Um, that is certainly something that we are looking at, but I can't speak specifically to that at this time. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Cadlick, um, there was an article in the Wall Street Journal the other day about a, the USN Comfort, the naval ship that was um, a medical ship and, and sure. how it was off the coast of Puerto Rico, but it wasn't being utilized. And I just wanted to get your input on how we could do a better job in, in the future of making sure, from what I understand, it's a 250-bed hospital sure. on the water, but only 150 beds were being utilized at one time? Yes, sir. What can we do to make that better? I mean, it's costing us $180,000 a day just to have it there. And, and those people desperately off of Puerto Rico need help. Yes, sir. And, and, um, and again, to allude to, to Ms. Clark's uh, question before, part of our plan was basically use the comfort as a, as a capability to deal with high acuity patients, intensive care unit patients, particularly in circumstances where hospitals on generators would fail where we would need to urgently transfer critically ill patients somewhere. And so we were basically using the 50 bed ICU um, on, the, on the boat, sir. And we understand and appreciate that, but it seems like we could have made better use of it. And what, have we learned anything? Is there anything we can do differently to make it more accessible in the future? And so we're in the midst of actually looking how we can utilize it more, except more of a stationary uh, platform probably birth in one of the ports in Puerto Rico. Exactly. And, and Make so it that, more accessible. And so that is, that's been an ongoing conversation with the Department of Health in Puerto Rico to assess what we can, how we can use that more uh, to, to their needs. Okay, thank you. Dr. Gottlieb, um, from, it's my understanding that, FB, that the FDA can, um, can declare on a shortage list medications that, that are, are not available and that they can be compounded. Is that true? They can be compounded by pharmacies if they're put on the FDA shortage list? Uh, we, don't, we don't typically look at the um, opportunity to compound as, a, as a, an alternative or solution for shortages. Our drug shortage staff would typically try to work to help get the approved product back in supply and might look to help source um, the same product from overseas manufacturing facilities that might be inspected by by FDA. Uh, it is the case that in certain situations um, you might see uh, practitioners go to uh, approved compounding facilities, facilities that are compounding within the confines of, of the statute uh, right. to source certain products. Okay, so, so you're actually increasing access to alternative medications? Is that what you're trying to do? We've taken it, thanks, thanks to some of the new authorities that Congress gave us with respect to our drug shortage staff and, and our ability to identify shortages further out from the, from the actual occurrence of a shortage, we've been taking steps to try to mitigate um, the shortages that have occurred, but also situations where we see the potential for products to tip into shortage. So we're looking out typically one to two months um, for what we think could potentially happen if, if production doesn't resume and taking steps to, for example, move temporarily certain manufacturing out of facilities that might be damaged or not, not up to full production to facilities in other markets that could help supply the right. U.S. market. Okay. I would ask you, as, as you continue on your process for the memorandum of understanding dealing with compounded medications, that you would take in consideration natural disasters and that there would be exceptions put in there where compounding pharmacies could be utilized so that they could get those medications to those patients in the case of natural disasters such as this. And we'd be happy to work with Congress on that as well. It might be something more appropriately addressed in statute, but I certainly look forward to working with you on and that. And I'll be glad to work on that 
that if it needs to be addressed in the statute. One final question I'll just ask you, Dr. Kotlev. Is the CDC supporting vaccinations to prevent leptospirosis? Well, I would defer to my CDC colleague. Uh, okay, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, there's no vaccine for leptospirosis. There is no vaccine for there that right not. now? No, it's, it's What about treatable. treatment for it? There is treat it's, very, it's very treatable. It works better the earlier the um, disease is identified, so earlier treatment is more effective. Is that being treatment. supplied to Puerto Rico now? It is. They're, the antibiotics that are used for treatment are, are they're not. Pretty common? They're, yeah, they are. They're not anything special. Okay. Uh, penicillin, tetracyclines. Okay. Great. Well, tetracycline is not available as, as much as it ought to be. Uh, depends on which as variety. As Dr. Gottlieb will attest, unless you're getting it for fish tanks. Nevertheless, I'm serious. Nevertheless, it is a problem. But thank you very much, and thank all of you again. And I yield back.